What is up guys, this is Steve for Angela Knight and what I've got for you today is my part 3 of my top 10 must have apps video. These are just the apps I use most and the ones I think are most useful, so enjoy the video. So first up I thought we'd go for a launcher, this one is Action Launcher 3 by Chris M Lacey. If you swipe off the left side of the screen you get a list of all your applications sorted alphabetically and if you go to the right you get this quick panel which you can put widgets and shortcuts on. One of the cool things it does is it themes the whole thing based off your wallpaper. As with previous versions of Action Launcher, you have the option to have the action bar at the top. You can also just have a search or a search plus menu button. So as you can see, there is now a search bar on my home screen, and that is also themed to the colour of the wallpaper, which is pretty neat. So you can see I've changed my wallpaper, and automatically it has changed the colour of the search bar. One of the things Action Launcher introduced was covers, which meant that if you swipe up on an icon like this, you can get to the folder, and if you tap, it just jumps to the first thing in that folder. As well as covers, it has a thing called shutters, so if you swipe up on an icon, it can also launch the widget for that application, which is pretty neat. Next up, we have App Dialer Pro, and this gives you a T9 style or a QWERTY style keyboard, and with this keyboard, you can just tap to search for things. So, for example, if I want to find the Play Store, I can type in Play Store, and it appears right there. You can change between the QWERTY keyboard and the number pad based on your preference. It's also got a couple of themes, so it's basically just a light version and a dark version. If you're using something like a really minimalist home screen, this is quite a cool option to have for searching for both your contacts and your apps. Next up we have Inbox by Google, which is their sort of new imagining of email. To get this, um, go to the link in the description and then you basically give them your email address and they should reply to you within the next couple of days. I think for me it took like 14 hours or something. As you can see it looks kind of similar to the um, inbox of old or the Gmail of old. At the bottom here you've got a floating button which is very like the new layout in Keep. So you've got some of your recently contacted contacts. You can also hit here which will let you add a reminder which is kind of cooked into both Inbox and Google Now. Also at the bottom you've got there which is invite to inbox which allows you to invite friends to inbox which is pretty useful and also then you get the compose option if you tap the red, um, the red thing again. The whole interface as you can see is just a little bit cleaner, a little bit more nicely sort of rendered than in the past. You've got the option to swipe and if you go this way you get the snooze option. Now this is great because it means if you're procrastinating and you don't want to do something you can snooze it for the future but then you actually do remember to do it because you get the notification pinging up again so you don't just sort of put a uh, flag in it like you do in um, Outlook and then just forget about it. If you long press on an email, you get the option to pin it. I think this is probably the most useful thing um, up there with reminders, but probably the most useful thing that Inbox has implemented. If you tap this, it goes to, it stays in your inbox. But then if you tap the pin icon up here, you just then get the things that you've pinned, which is really, really useful. It's a nice way of seeing all those things you need to get need to get done. It's like having a little in tray and then you can work through them. Um, and it's quite a nice way to do it organized. I'm really, really disorganized, but this has actually been quite useful. Um, so yeah, Google Inbox. It is good. Next up we have Feedly, and this is a news aggregating kind of app, which pulls together posts from across the internet. What's neat is how it organizes everything by these tags. So for example, culture, I have a little section for culture, and then you can go next for food, for example. So everything you have is saved um, sort of exactly where you'd expect it to be, so you don't have to troll through menus and things like that to find what you're looking for. I also love the way that when you add content, it makes it really, really easy to find new stuff. So based on the stuff I've already saved and the stuff I follow, it recommends some blogs. So for example, if I wanted uh, photography, I can click on photography and it will give you a bunch of different sites for photography. You can also search. So for example, if you want to know more about, I don't know, comics, as a comic sitting in front of me, so my brain went straight to that, you can see you can find a bunch for that subject. Another cool thing with this is you can grab other people's boards and add it to your content. So for example, if I want this food one, I can long press and you can see there's a board created by someone called Amanda Hesse and you hit all add and it adds them all to your board automatically so you don't have to go scrolling through trying to find stuff. But all in all, it's a really great looking RSS app and it's a great way to get everything together that you want to read. Next up we have Corgi and this is a lock screen app that plugs into the previous app Feedly and there's a lot of ease in that Corgi Feedly. Perfect. This just plonks all your Feedly content onto your lock screen. You can of course scroll through and decide exactly which content you want to see. You can also go in and just pick from some of the categories they've got sort of pre-selected for you. If you want to have security on your phone as well as this, you can have this, so you've got the security option. I'm just going to turn it on to swipe. 
So as you can see, on your lock screen you get a big picture. They have this sort of tint that matches the style of the article, so life hack is always green, uh, YouTube things tend to be red, stuff like that, which I kind of like, but also at the same time it does wash out quite a lot of the detail, um, and it looks a little bit strange, the notification bar. Um, but saying that, it's not unpleasant, it's still quite a pretty kind of experience. You swipe up on an article to read it, and you can see there you get the full, um, the full color of the photos coming through. And you can read the article, you've got all the hyperlinks out, um, all the good stuff. So it's actually quite a nice way to actually consume uh, Feedly Media. You can also then swipe across to get to different news articles. And when you're in an article, you can also swipe across to read more stuff. And as you can see there, if you swipe to the right, so that's the left, sort of moving towards the right, then it'll unlock to your home screen. Also in the lock screen, you see you get a little red plus here. If you tap that, you get the option to share the story you're currently viewing, or you can go straight to the web, you can go to your phone, the camera. And then at the bottom here, you've got one that says previous, and this just means if you swipe away an article, you've got a way to get back and read it again. Next up, we have Happy Cow, and I can forgive the interface of this app, because firstly, it's called Happy Cow, and also the logo is a purple cow, which is just awesome. But this is an app which will show you the closest vegan and vegetarian restaurants. Now, I'm not vegan or vegetarian myself, but a lot of my friends are, and I know how difficult it can be when you all go to eat out or something like that. A lot of places don't have a huge selection for vegans. So this is a really good way to find new places near you um, that sort of cater for that. So it lists everything by proximity. Should have turned that off. It lists everything by... <laughs> it lists all the places by their proximity to you. So if you tap on one, you get a quick sort of star rating review. You get options to see their address. You can then open that in maps. Um, get directions and stuff like that. You've obviously got the phone number, little description, um, and in this it'll say, for example, if it's really vegan friendly, it'll say vegan friendly in here. Um, then you've got a little indication of price, the website, and a little bit more info. And then at the bottom, you can also tap to see reviews, and you can also upload your own and also then share it. But if you don't have friends who are vegan or vegetarian, or if you are yourself, this app could be really useful. The next app is called Power Button Flashlight, and this is kind of exactly what it says on the tin. This lets you turn a flashlight on and off using your power button. So I'm just gonna close the actual interface of the app. So I'm just gonna hit the power button three times in a row, and you can hear it vibrate, and you can see on my hand there the torch is turned on. And then if I do the same thing again, you can see the torch has turned off. So it's a really simple app. Ah! <clears throat> next up we have Speed Read. You've probably seen this on like Buzzfeed or somewhere online. And this is a way of reading which pings you a word at a time and it lets you read at incredible speeds. So you can get up to like 600 words a minute with this. Um, it's a very different, different experience from reading. Like I wouldn't do this to read for pleasure because you can't really sort of like savor it and you obviously can't go back and forward um, in the same way you can when you're just reading normally. But if you're trying to get say news articles or something like that in very, very quickly, I found this is a really cool way to do it. So you download the app and then it works as basically a plugin for other reading apps. Unfortunately it doesn't work with the Kindle, which is kind of annoying, but there are a few apps that I use that it does work with. Now the way the speed reader works is it plugs itself into the text-to-speech engine. So you hit TTS and you can give it a couple of seconds to think about it and fire up. And as you can see this pops up. And then this will feed you um, words at a time. You can see it gets a little bit strange here because it's from Pocket, there's some code that's been cut into it. You can tap up and down here to change how many words per minute you want in increments of 50. You can also go back to the start of stuff and skip through um, individual words. It also works for play books and a bunch of other news apps. It's not the prettiest thing in the world but as a productivity tool it is pretty cool. The next app is Gravity Screen and this is really cool. It basically means you never need to use your power button to turn your phone on and off. So this is really useful for people who the power button is actually broken for, but also just generally it's like having one less step. You pull your phone out of your pocket and it turns on automatically. You put it in your pocket and you know it's going to turn off. So you've got a bunch of different settings which you should play with um, depending on which device you're using. This works through the ambient light sensor and the G sensor and you can basically decide which one you want to prefer um, based on the settings. Now when you run the app you will get a notification, a persistent not notification in the uh, notification drawer and you tap that and it will turn it on. So I've got it set to use the proximity sensor to know when it's in my pocket. So if it goes into my pocket, the sensor gets covered, the phone turns off, and then I pull it out of my pocket and it turns back on again. So you can see how that sort of like removes that one step. It's really useful. I've noticed, especially if I'm doing something like going shopping, if I'm pulling my phone out of my pocket to check a shopping list, um, I can obviously do it in one hand 
um, and hit the power button but depending on which um, pocket that's in and what's in my hands that's sometimes harder to do so it's pretty lazy but it's also pretty cool and I love the way that you can pop it face down on the table um, and then you can flip it over and it will also light up Next up we've got Brainwave and this is an app that lets you sort of act like a Jedi and control your music using hand gestures over the sensors at the top of your, on the top of your phone. So you start it up and I'm going to choose to use it with Spotify. Um, for copyright reasons I'm probably going to have to turn all this music down so you can't actually hear it. But I'll give you an example, so we'll play Weapon of Choice and then you can't really see my hand behind the camera but I can move it in. I hope you like that guys, please comment below if there's any apps you think should be in this list or should be included in the next list. Please also subscribe if you haven't seen me before. Also go ahead and give the video a thumbs up, that really does help. Um, you can follow me on all my social media things on the links, on the links, with the links in the description. And I know I haven't done anything for ages, I always do this, I sort of come in for a while, I do two months of stuff and then I stop. Uh, it's generally to do with like universities and holidays and stuff, like I've been really really busy at uni doing um, plays, poetry things writing stuff, um, just doing general uni life which seems to take all the time. So I apologise, I haven't done anything for absolutely ages and I've been really quiet about it with you guys. I am going to try and carry on doing this at uni and I know I keep saying that and I keep failing to sort of deliver but I'm going to try my best again um, and if not I am at least going to do some stuff towards the end of the holiday to let you guys know what's going to happen. Um, as regards to videos, if there's anything else you want to see please comment below and I would love to, uh, I'd love to do some videos for you guys over this holiday as I've got some free time. Uh, yeah, I believe that is everything. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.